Hello, this is Dr. Drew Hall again with Upper Cervical Healthcare of Los Angeles and Carson. Today, what I want to talk about is spasmodic torticollis. Most people have heard of torticollis and they know that torticollis is this. The head is twisted, the shoulders up, and the person is locked. We've all, if we've had kids, it's not horribly uncommon once in a while in kids when they sleep with the window open or they have a sports injury. But that's not the type of torticollis I'm talking about. The type of torticollis I want to talk today about is spasmodic torticollis. And this is not only do they have a huge head adaptation. Sometimes it's to the right, sometimes it's to the left. And in some cases, the case I'm going to talk about today, the back part of the muscles and the back part of the neck and upper back are in a rhythmic contraction and they're pulling backwards involuntarily. So I have a case that goes all the way back to the very beginning of my practice. In fact, the husband of this case works in my office as a translator. But this particular gal came into the office about 18 years ago and the back of her head was literally touching her upper back and she was cranked back like this and she was stuck there for about seven years. There was a rhythmic contraction going on so it wasn't just the fact that she was stuck that way. There was a non-stop rhythmic contraction going on in the muscles and of course you can imagine trying to live your life that way and it wasn't easy for this particular gal. In fact, she was in a wheelchair, she was unable to sleep in a bed, she was unable to do just menial tasks around the house and enjoy much um, quality of life. And thank God, her husband, who is a smart man, uh, tried a bunch of different modalities trying to help his wife with spasmodic torticollis and he came across upper cervical care through a friend got his wife into, at that time, the Huntington Beach office, and she had her upper neck corrected. So a lot of these spasmodic torticollis cases, what's happening is they've either had a traumatic injury uh, that has caused damage in the upper neck, which is interfering with the postural tone muscles and causing aberrant signals to go into the CNS and cause aberrant signals to go into the muscles and tell them to contract when they shouldn't. And there are also some cases that we've had that have had psychiatric conditions that have been put on psychiatric medication or yet worse, injected with Haldol in psychiatric wards and that is, both of those things are well known to cause spasmodic torticollis. But if it's the case of a traumatic injury, um, what we found with this particular case was once she got her upper neck precisely corrected, there was a huge shift. Uh, we're now talking 18 years later, but Within two or three months, she was able to sleep in a bed. She was able to walk again. Her head wasn't completely locked down in an extension position where the muscles had let go enough to where she was more in an upright uh, position. Now, we still take care of this family today. She is not 100% normal, but she functions at a quality of life that she didn't have before. So. Unfortunately, these spasmodic total cause cases, there isn't a lot to offer in the medical profession. Some people get Botox injections, which do allow for some relief uh, temporarily, but for the most part, there isn't a heck of a lot of options that exist in the conventional mainstream medical model. So we found over the years, I don't know, we've probably taken care of 25 or 30 spasmodic torticollis cases and the majority of them do quite well. We don't find 100% resolution, but we do find that a very large majority of them have about a 70 to 80% reduction in the involuntary uh, muscle pull that they experience, which for those of you who may be suffering with this, that's uh, a big difference from living at a no improvement level. So if you have come across this video and you may be asking the question, well, how can an upper cervical doc help? How, how does this happen? It's a pretty simple uh, mechanism. The head, the average person's head weighs 10 to 12 pounds and it sits on this poor little bone called the atlas and there's a joint here and here where the head rests. So you have a bowling ball sitting on this two ounce bone, it's on the end of a stick, your neck, and therefore the most vulnerable area that the spine can be injured at is what we call the craniocervical junction, that's where the head meets the neck. And so most of these spasmodic torticollis cases that we see in the case of um, my office worker's wife, 
she was in a pretty bad rear end collision prior to its onset. So a lot of these cases, there's a big trauma that happens prior to the onset and that trauma causes the upper cervical spine integrity where it meets with the head, all the ligaments and soft tissue. When you have an injury to tear, the segment misaligns, the segment no longer moves the way it's supposed to, it irritates the spinal cord, and then there's a cascade of things that happen afterwards. But in the case of spasmodic torticollis cases, there is an aberrant nerve signal that's telling those muscles to contract when it shouldn't. And that's just an aberration of the central nervous system, which in many cases is coming from this upper neck injury. So what do we do? We run the person through a battery of tests. We find out where they have trouble, where they have a spinal misalignment. And then we take precise imaging to find out exactly how the joint is misaligned, what the angulation of the joint is. And if you will, that's kind of a blueprint. It's a blueprint of how the person's built, how they're out of alignment, so we know how to introduce a very precise force with no twisting, popping, or pulling to get the segment back under the body's control. Once that segment that was locked is back under control, then the body goes through a healing and mending and repairing process. And we do find in these muscle patterning, especially if it's been there for a long time, it is not an overnight sensation. It does take time for the, pat the abnormal neurological pattern that's telling that muscle to continually contract to slowly start to, to balance itself out. So if you're listening to this, and this makes sense, and you've been just about any, everywhere, and no one's been able to help to this point, our offices do offer a free consult, uh, and it runs about 45 minutes. We'll run you through a battery of tests to find out whether you're suffering with this or not. If you have spasmodic torticollis, there's about a 99.999% chance you have an upper neck misalignment. And so once we know you have an upper neck misalignment, we'll take the imaging, and the imaging is used to make a precise correction. Once you're corrected, the follow-up care is to monitor the patient over time uh, to make sure that the segment is staying in its normal range of motion. And if it is, no corrections are made. The goal is to get you to stay in alignment as long as possible. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, we have two offices where you can take us up on the free consult. Our Los Angeles phone number is 213-399-7772. And our Carson office, which is in the South Bay, is 310 Three two four six one seven two. If you're outside of the Los Angeles area and you've come across this video and has piqued your interest and you may be wondering if there's someone in your location, you can call either one of those numbers and our office would be happy uh, to help find an upper cervical doctor in your area. All right, I hope this information was educational and has gotten into the hands of those who need it. Thanks for listening.